Let us watch him beat the side of it. Pepper, can you hear me? Pepper! Pepper! What you doing, Kelsey? Hmm? Good morning, girls. Pasture's looking mighty green out here right now. We got a little, uh, a little bit of rain yesterday. Not a lot, but a little shot of green. Here comes the alpacas. The donkey poodle race is on. I don't think all the yelling is necessary. Actually, it might be necessary. <laughs> well, what's up guys? It's Daniel from Arms Family Homestead and I'll get to why yelling might be necessary in a minute. Uh, the good news is, caught another pig. I uh, had to drop the trap on one single pig. <laughs> um, uh, the uh, trap that's at my buddy's place, at Lindell's place where we went and tried to, tried to do a control burn and stuff, uh, he's got a pretty good sized group of pigs that were coming into his game camera, but he told me he had one or two that were kind of bully pigs that were pushing everybody around and pushing them out from under his feeder and stuff. So if one of those come into the trap to go ahead and drop it, well, last night one showed up. Think about catching this pig because it's just one and he's been there twice. You Nobody gonna, else is you're not going to pull the trigger. <laughs> Why not? I, it's like a video game. I would pull it. <laughs> Let's watch him beat the side of it. Boom, that's what I expected. Yep. Can't believe he ain't hit coming and hitting the side. He's a little calmer than I actually thought. They calm down pretty quick. They don't go too nuts for too long. They calm down. He'll go back to eating in just a second. Especially when it's just one or two. Hmm. Well, as you can see, I just dropped the trap on that uh, one single pig. And that's... That trap is at my buddy's place at Lindell's where we burned the other day. And I told you guys when I was there that uh, I'd seen one pig one time. And that's been a few nights ago. They actually spent the weekend down there hanging out at their camper and stuff. And the trap's only a couple hundred yards from that camper. So this pig looks pretty good size. I'm not saying it's just a monster. But uh, I went ahead and dropped the trap because I've got another place that I really need to get a trap to pretty soon. So I don't know when we're gonna, I don't know when I'll get it there. But anyways, I'm just driving the, the uh, side by side down the end of my gate. Cause this, I was kind of on the way for Josh. So he's gonna pick me up. We're gonna go load this haul. I'm not sure about that light. Yeah, she can't see. Holy crap. Oh, that chain had that twist lock on it. Yeah. Why are you by yourself, girlfriend? Where's all the rest? There's your Freddy hole. Go hit it. There she goes. All right, trap's 
rebated. Camera's on. He actually had a bunch of old moldy bread. So one sow down. Huh. Interesting that it was one female alone. So it may have just been one pig, but it will be interesting to see if uh, that one, getting one out of there will let the others come into the area. Maybe that one is just a bully pig that's pushing everybody out of the trap area. And uh, that's not uncommon. That's animals show dominance in all different ways. And especially those wild hogs, if one's really dominant, they kind of push the others around. It was weird that it was a sow though. I would have expected it to be a boar hog, but either way, getting rid of any feral pig off a of property is a good thing. Now back to that screaming thing. Um, I'm out starting this video really early in the morning. <laughs> today is the first day of the 2024 crossfit open do you know what that means do you have any idea what that means hmm. so my wife and i've been in the crossfit for like a year and a half now this is our second crossfit open the open is a competition every year that leads up to the crossfit games and all that we are not those people by any means but the cool thing about the open is it kind of gives us a gauge to see where we are personally with each other ourselves and within our gym plus within the whole world you can, it'll show you where you rank like 125,000th place you know something like that anyways today is the first workout of the crossfit open for 2024 that's it's brutal it's going to be a brutal workout a mixture of uh, burpees and dumbbell snatches yeah it's going to be a really tough workout it's like i know this doesn't mean anything to a lot of you anyways in the end it's 90 burpees 90 dumbbell snatches um so that's how we're gonna go start our day today may video a little bit of it not a lot anyways either way the open is a lot of fun it's a big community thing within our gym we have teams and competitions and you know all the fun stuff to make sweating and dying together tolerable i guess so Let's get this day started <sighs> in a very hard way. <laughs> Why are you in such a hurry? <laughs> I like talking to the back of your head. Oh! Pee or puke or what? Nothing. What? I don't know what you said there. <laughs> Woo! I didn't think there'd be very many people here this morning. Oh, stand up tall, Kendall. Here we go. Stand up tall. Good idea. No. No? You did good. You did good. Should you go throw up? Hurry up and recover. What? I said hurry up and recover. <laughs> Trying to get my heart right now. <laughs> good luck with that. Oh my gosh. What was the worst part? Well, it. Oh, for sure. <laughs> How many did I do? How many did we do? Like 90? 90. 90 burpees. That's so dumb. Born ready. I know you love the burpees. No. No.
You're okay? I think so. I don't really know. It hurts. But I beat my wife. <laughs> Hashtag life goals. If I, if I hadn't got no rep like 12 hey, times. This is one place in life where I can legally beat my wife <laughs> and not get in trouble. <laughs> Until I get home, then I'll be in trouble. No. Hey. <laughs> Ice cream sandwich. Sounds delicious right now. Maybe a little bit more. Maybe a little bit more. Uh oh. About time to order some more. Ice cream sandwich. Protein? Okay. Yeah. That was really dumb. So, that workout, <laughs> mentally, physically, uh, everything, very challenging. And um, so I'm rethinking when DJ made this shirt and it says, Dan's nuts. I think she should have put Dan is nuts <clears throat> because that was tough. That was really, really hard, you know. And I know not everybody's into the whole CrossFit scene and working out and all that. But we are, so I'm going to tell you about it. <laughs> uh, I dedicate, I hereby dedicate this video to my good buddy, Nathan, from Out of the Woods. He absolutely loves anything to do uh, with uh, my workout stuff. So, you know, a lot of days we'll go work out and uh, be all dripping sweat and hot. And uh, I'll take my shirt off and take a picture and send it to Nathan because he's jealous. He just loves it. And... Uh, I, th I think we could, if we could just get Nathan, you know, in a little better shape, trim his beard up a little bit. He would look young like me. I love Nathan. He's a great guy. And I love giving him fits because he's not interested in my workout information. But so today's workout, 24.1, the CrossFit Open is, and like I said, we're, we're not competing, you know, uh, to win <laughs> anything by any means, but it is pretty cool because... We can compete with other athletes all over the country, all over the world, and see where we stand. So that workout was snatches and burpees, and it was 21, 15, 9, but you had to do 21 left-handed snatches, 21 burpees, 21 right-handed snatches, 21 burpees, then 15 left, burpee, right, burpee, 9. It's a long workout. Um, it was a painful workout, <laughs> uh, could have done better, but I think my, my official time was thir 1341 DJ's was 1421 and I'm proud of myself because I beat my wife because that doesn't happen a lot anymore. That woman is a beast. She just usually kicks my butt in these workouts. I'm just glad she's not out here. So <clears throat> I'm a little bit jealous. Uh, our good friends, Richie and Tracy, you know, they started CrossFit back when we did. They go all the time. Uh, Tracy kicked all of our tails. Tracy was like 11 something. I don't even understand it. It's she's, she's killing us. Uh, Richie, though, on the other hand, he said, oh, my back hurts. I don't think I can do this. I'm just going to hold off a couple days. I think he got scared is what I think happened. Listen, Richie's a power lifter. He's a 52-year-old guy. <laughs> old old guy i said that right correct uh that is into powerlifting and can bench press squat and all that stuff way more than i can so i wrote in a little bit when i beat him at crossfit so i'm gonna say this if you are competing in the open in the crossfit open 24.1 24.2 24.3 over the next couple weeks uh let me know what i'll do is i'll put my official time and it was scaled i use a 35 pound dumbbell not the 50 because I just thought that was a smarter option. Uh, I'll put that in a comment and uh, I'll pin it on YouTube, Facebook, wherever. If you're competing in it, put your score in there below it and we can all see, well, there's probably like five of us, but we can see everybody's scores if if you're into that thing. Now, in other news, back to the, uh, the farming stuff. <clears throat> I did have a pallet of seed come in the other day from uh, Green Cover Seed. I bought, as you can see, <laughs> Hey, Fallon, I'm trying to talk. Thank you. I bought a bunch of cover crop seed 
the plant here and uh, on the Mill Creek property. Several different varieties, but uh, this is the, the company I bought my seed from for all of my, my fall plots. And we're going to be doing some, some spring and summer stuff. So this is a summer release blend, blend of different things. Uh, I've got, I bought several bags of this warm season pollinator mix. So it should have a lot of, a lot of flowering plants in it. So maybe we can attract some pollinators, Earl. What do you think? So aside from that, well, DJ and I have been, uh, trying to diligently work with Brie. So I'm going to see if I can run her in the stall and, uh, love on her a little bit she really doesn't like it but she will someday it's uh it's quite the process with this little donkey she's all she's got a lot of her mom in her freedom has never liked attention freedom you know we've had her for i don't even know how many years a long time and freedom has never uh really been a super friendly donkey she'll eat out of our hands and stuff but nothing like a a bottle raised phoebe huh phoebes so we're gonna work with brie and try to get her to love us <laughs> she will love me whether she wants to or not all right phoebe let me in the gate now i've got to come in okay i'm just trying to get out <clears throat> all right brie you know what i want you know what i want you to do she's getting wise to my uh my game plan so what i do is i come out here and i run her through the pen and in the stall so that she's in a smaller enclosed space and <laughs> she knows what i want her to do and she does not like it huh brie gotta go down there and make a left you know that's what i want you know what i want you to do come on let's go let's go brie Here we go. We're getting closer. We're getting closer. Ooh. Come on. There you go. There you go. Come on. In the stall. You know what I want. Come on. Good girl. Not this time, Phoebe. Going in without you, okay? All right, Miss Bree, I've got that gate chain shut. You think you know how to open it because you did the other day, but I've got it chained shut on you now. Yep, it didn't pop open when you hit it, did it? Come here. Easy, easy, Bree, easy. It's okay, it's okay. You're all right. Whoa. Hey, no kicking, no kicking. I just told mom you're not a kicker. And there you are kicking at me. Woo! No kicking. I'll put Phoebe in here. She kind of lined you out. Calm down. Whoa. Easy breathe. Whoa. Whoa. Easy. Easy, quit kicking, quit kicking, quit kicking, easy, push your butt around that way, whoa, whoa, whoa. quit, quit, quit kicking, come on baby, you went on the wrong side of the gate, come on. Easy, Brie. Easy. 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 Whoa. Phoebe, back up. Get off the camera. So the other day, <laughs> when DJ and I were out here, I came down and had pinned Brie up and was in here for 20 minutes or so 
before DJ got home and was messing with Bree and she did she did really really well. Never kicked, never really got aggressive. Phoebe, you're not getting the camera. <laughs> Today on the other hand, oh gosh. Today on the other hand, Bree's a little kicky. She's a little kicky and I don't like that. <laughs> That's painful. When a donkey kicks you, even a young mini donkey, when they kick you in the knee, it hurts real bad. And uh, I've been poking, been poking at some friends, you know, at the gym because they're injured and weren't able to compete. <sighs> I don't need to get injured. I've got to be able to compete the next two weeks. Oh gosh, baby. Get off the camera. Easy Bree, easy Bree. Whoa, whoa, no kicking, no kicking, no kicking Bree. There you go. It ain't much, but we gotta start slow. She's not trying to kick now at least, even though she really <laughs> does not want to look at the camera. Huh, Bree? What? Are you giving in to the pressure a little bit? Or are you just waiting for your opportunity to kick me? Hmm? Whoa. 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 Come here, Bree. Phoebe'll tell you I'm not that bad of a guy. Yeah, I'm not that bad. Oh, I want you to kick my teeth out. It's one thing getting kicked in the leg. Getting kicked in the teeth hurts. I don't want to do that. All right. Okay, pretty girl. Let me pet you one more time, and I'll let you out. Okay? Deal? No. Phoebe, don't be mean. Don't be mean. Bree's just a baby. She's a little baby. One more time. Shh. Easy. Here, I'll settle for the side. As long as you're not kicking. Yeah, as long as you're not kicking. I had a girl. Good girl, Bree. That's much better. Yeah. Takes her 10 or 15 minutes to get calmed down a little bit, I guess. Okay, I'll open the gate. Come on out, girls. Phoebe, come on. Here, I think this has got Bree hung up a little bit. Come on, Phoebe. Okay, Bree, your turn. You can come out. Phoebe. Oh, no. You're protecting me from her, aren't you? Yeah, she did kick me. So I do appreciate you being a protector. All right, girls. <laughs> Phoebe, you're such a good girl. I like how you're trying to protect me from getting kicked. Yeah. Phoebe's like, yeah, you're the dumb one that walks up behind her. Yep, and she just kicks you. I know, Phoebe. I'm the dumb one. It's my fault. I don't blame Bree. Difference in a bottle, baby, <laughs> and a mom-raised baby. Especially with a mom that, you know, is a little standoffish anyways. Ain't that right, Phoebes? But, as you can see, we made some progress. I've been doing that here and there. Not every single day, but I'll come out here and pin her up in the stall and make her love me. She's going to go see her mom. 
I'm gonna go see mom. Freedom! <laughs> Look at this. One, two, three, four, five, six donkeys, two alpacas. Well, there's the third alpaca. They're all just standing up here, hanging out. The back gate's open. They've got all that green pasture back there. But they're too curious about what I'm doing. Huh, Reba? Hmm? What you doing, Reba? Hmm? What do you want? It's not feeding time yet. I'll feed you in a little while. What's up, Larry Bird? You been ducking any basketballs lately? No? I think you could dunk on Pepper. That's what I think. You looking good, man. Spring turkey season's coming up. You better stay at home. One of the neighbors will sure think you're a trophy, buddy. She woke up. I'm just gonna walk over and pet her. <laughs> She's on to my game. Pepper. So, <laughs> I have some uh, suspicions about Pepper. And I don't know how to verify whether it's true or false, but I have some suspicions that uh, Pepper may be older than what I thought she was. I don't know. I really don't know how old she is because, you know, she was full grown when we got her. Are you protecting Pepper? But I'm starting to think that Pepper might be deaf because there's a lot of days I come out here and make a lot of noise and Pepper never wakes up until I walk close to her and she can feel my, my footsteps or she can see me because if I come up behind her, most of the time, Pepper doesn't know I'm there. What, dude? Huh? So here's what I'm talking about. I was just standing there in front of her talking, right? Pepper, can you hear me? Pepper! Pepper! Hello! Pepper! Hey! nothing either she's deaf or she just don't care but either way even as long as pepper's been here she's never ever liked to be touched i don't know her history where she came from well i, I know a little bit of her history i know where i got her from but pepper was originally rescued from a dog pound where they're not allowed to have pot belly pigs I'm not sure why somebody dropped their pot belly pig off the dog pound but we have no idea what her history was before that. And then she lived alone at the lagoon at the youth camp nearby for, I don't know, a couple of years. So, watch this. <laughs> she doesn't like to be touched, but I think she's deaf. Can you hear me, ma'am? Yep, Larry, I think she's deaf. What do you think? Give me a gobble if you think she's deaf. Give me one of these. So, like I said, I have no idea how old Pepper is. It may She may just be... Uh, Getting really old. I, I honestly don't know. But in other news, we should be getting really close to kidding season. We should have some baby goats starting to hit the ground pretty soon. I don't think that one's going to have any babies this year, though. That one doesn't look pregnant. Man, that sunlight feel good, Bear? It's been cold the last couple days. So we had this really 
it's Oklahoma. Everything's strange about the weather. It's always going to be. And I'm sure where you are, it's everybody always says, if you don't like the weather, just stick around 15 minutes and it's going to change. Well, we had, what, a week of, what, mid-70s to 80s, and then one day it was 88 degrees. And the very next day, 35. Yeah. With a cold north wind. And it was no fun. Home bear. <laughs> he sees something else, isn't he? So the last two or three days, it's been in the 30s, 40s. I think it got up to in the 50s, but at night down in the 30s. Hey, you better watch yourself back there. I've got my livestock guardian dog here to protect me. Yeah, and bears are good. So today we're back up in the in the 60s. It's almost just warm enough to take my hoodie off, but there's a little breeze, so. This guy's making me nervous. Anyways, I think uh, I'm going to let the animals do their thing and go find something else to do because it is a beautiful afternoon. stumps or logs still smoldering but uh, I had some friends come out the other day and and help out I had four or five folks come out and we burned another I don't know 10 12 total acres something like that a lot of what I've been doing here is not just big fires it's not like the one we did at Mill Creek it was you know a big prescribed fire that was planned out over a year these are like two, three, four acres, small pieces of timber that I can handle by myself. And then I had a larger block of, I don't know, 10, 10 ish acres. I had a few guys come help me cause it's just too big. But I did notice the first, one of the first ones areas that I burn is already starting to green up. So it may not look like much to you guys from a distance, but I did this burn I don't know, a little over a week ago. That one was just a few days, but check this out. We've already started getting a green up and that's really without a rain. We had a little bit of precipitation yesterday, but as you can see, it's not even enough to settle the dust. So it's, this is just what's greening up and coming back after the fire with what residual moisture there was in the soil. So that's pretty cool to see. I mean, I know you guys can't see it very well on camera, but the, to the naked eye here, I can see little green sprouts popping up everywhere. And that's obviously one of our main goals is clean up the forest floor, open up the seed bed a little bit and promote more grasses and forbs and things. Not that we're running livestock in the timber. Um, this is actually still really thick timber and I may come through and start doing a little bit of thinning. They do like what's called a hack and squirt. You take a hatchet and notch into a tree and spray it with a chemical to kill the tree. Probably won't do it on, you know, the, the good hardwoods that we want to keep, like the oaks and stuff. But there's a lot of elm trees and hackberries and just things that aren't desirable. But if we can open up that canopy and get a little bit more light on the ground, that'll promote more um more food more habitat down here on the forest floor but our burns overall have been very successful this year
So you can see everywhere there's just like a white line or a gray line on the ground. That's where an old, you know, dead rotten log was laying. And now it just put its nutrients back into the soil. So we'll get a rain. Everything will uh, absorb down into the soil. That's a lot of a lot of good nutrients that have been locked up in a in a tree for decades. You think about it, and we're putting that back into the soil to help the uh, the soil itself and to grow healthier trees, healthier plants, healthier grasses to uh, to feed the wildlife. See, there was where an old tree was laying and had an old tree was laying and had had rotted and now it's burned up and put all of its nutrients back into the ground. I see a tree still smoking way back here, probably, I don't know, 50, 60 yards into the black and uh, there's a cedar tree there that needs to be cut down. You won't see very many of those on this property, but there's a couple right there that have survived the cut over the years. So I had a lot of comments and a lot of questions and emails even from folks after showing these prescribed burns or controlled burns, whatever you want to call it. It's really not, these smaller ones are not really a full prescribed burn. But a lot of folks were concerned because if we start a fire and then don't put it out, well, that kind of defeats the purpose of our goals here and what we're doing. The problem is Smokey the Bear has been around for a lot of years, decades and decades and decades. And Smokey the Bear's job was to teach all of us little kids to not play with fire and not to uh, start forest fires. Only you can prevent forest fires. And I had a lot of comments from folks saying, you know, Oh, over the years, we've always been taught when we go camping, we build a campfire. We're always supposed to pour water on it, douse it, bury it, do everything before we leave the area. And we notice that you don't do that on these control burns. Well, these things take time. And this log right here is a perfect example. This fire was, I'd have to go back and, and actually look at it. I'm going to say five or six days ago something like that but if you look in every direction around me for well most directions a couple hundred yards but the road we just came from is about 50 or 60 yards it's all black all the way around so these logs can lay here and smolder for days and days and days we're not going to start a, a fire like this in the timber and then turn around two or three hours later drive around and put everything out it just doesn't work like that so you take a big tree like this this thing's been on the ground probably for five, six, seven years. Who knows? A long time. The fire came through here, burned some of the bark off of it, but most of the tree's still there. But you'll get these trees like this that are rotted and hollow on the inside, and they may burn for just for a week or longer. And like I said, we got a little bit of rain yesterday. Not enough to settle the dust, like I said, but I mean, look at this. Oh, it's going out. There are flames. Look at that still flames this is like i said five or six days old and this log has you know it started down there and it's just slowly worked its way down and this thing may smolder like this for a week you know still i mean we have flames and i'm not going to put that out i have no reason to put it out it's not a threat it's not a danger and i'm not at all concerned about that fire going anywhere and I do understand the concern, I, and I, I want you guys to know this is not just something we run out in the woods, start a fire, run off and leave, and have no plan. This is something that has been, that I've done for years, but you think about it. You guys have seen me on this channel building roads and trails on my property for years. And you saw on the video where we were igniting this burn area. Well, you didn't see this video. I didn't video it. <laughs> uh, but several others when we're igniting these things i spend a lot of time making sure my fire breaks are in good order and even after we have our fire and burn through here i come back you know i may go to the house the house is 400 yards away i may go to the house and eat supper but i come back even after dark multiple times to make sure we don't have something like that that's a standing dead tree next to a fire line 
that could fall across and two, three, four, five, six days later, finally burn across the fire line and take off and be a wildfire. And I, I understand the concern and I, I want you guys to, to know that uh, if we do our best to be safe and do everything in a, a safe way, and the concern comes from, like right now, all of all of what's going on in the Texas Panhandle in Western Oklahoma is super, super dangerous. I mean, there's some gigantic, massive wildfires. I have a friend that's out there. He works for the National Park Service, and he said it's just it's just black for miles and miles and miles and miles. He's been in the Park Service for almost well, maybe over 20 years now, actually and been a firefighter he's a park ranger but been you know on the fire crews for years and gone out on big fires and uh he said this is this is a crazy fire so our hearts go out to those folks that are dealing with those wildfires but there are ways to have prescribed fires and control burns that are safe and you have to know the right conditions you have to know when to light it and when not to light it you guys saw when we were burning at lindell's man we could have had a massive fire and cleaned up a lot of property for him but the conditions were not safe it was a hot dry day with very low humidity and very volatile fuels in those dead cedar piles and we chose not to light it now that was just the decision we made that day because we felt that was the smart thing to do so there's a lot of planning and thought that goes into this more than just hey let's go burn 10 acres today it's years of build up to a lot of this stuff and that's kind of why you don't see me just take off and go over to the mill creek property and start lighting things up uh, we had that big prescribed burn we had plenty of help and but it took me probably eight months to get all my fire line um, in place and approved by those guys to make sure it was safe got a phone call from the uh, barn builder company and they're going to be delivering materials here next Monday so just a few days out I say next Monday really just a few days away so hopefully in the next couple weeks we'll have us an equipment shed built and uh, have somewhere to park a few things undercover excuse me pardon me coming through So that's pretty much going to wrap it up for me today, guys. Um, got a lot of chores to finish up real quick and then head to town. I've got to get a haircut. And then we're going to head back to the CrossFit gym because most of the competitors in our gym, most of our friends, are going to be doing the CrossFit 24.1 workout. Hey! What's up, Kelsey? They're going to be doing it this evening. So we get to go back. They say to cheer them on, but it's really just to watch them suffer yeah it, that's what it's about it's it's watching each other suffer um that's one thing that that I, I love about crossfit and i never dreamed i would is the community of it the people and it's just like this you guys are a community of like-minded folks that all i'm not gonna say work together in the same direction but you're watching channels like this and videos like this because you have like-minded interest CrossFit is a very like-minded community of people of all different walks of life. I mean, anybody can join a CrossFit gym and find a way to fit in. And that's, it's so much fun. Going, enjoying each other, having a good time, giving your friends a hard time because they've got wussy-itis and don't compete. And they'll say, well, we'll do it on Monday. You know, this is what it's all about. You may, they may show up on Monday and score way higher than me. And that's okay. I'll be proud of them. So anyways, guys, do something today to make somebody smile because you never know. It just might change the world. Guys, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. You guys have a great day and we'll see you on the next video.